right there, question 12. So in this case, we have a function of x, which is equal to 4k x squared plus 4k plus 2 in brackets x plus 1. OK, where k is a real constant. Find the discriminant of f of x in terms of k. So the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And in the case of this one, b is going to be 4x plus, sorry, 4k plus 2. So 4k plus 2 squared minus 4 times the a coefficient, which is 4k. times c, which is 1. And so the discriminant will be equal to, start multiplying this out, we're going to have 16k squared, 4k times 2 is 8k, and two of them 16k, 6 plus 16k plus 4, 2 times 2, minus 16k for the 4 times 4k times 1. So, as we finish up there, tidy it up, we have 16k squared, the two 16ks and minus 16k cancels, plus 4. That's part A. By simplifying your answer, or otherwise prove that f of x has two distinct roots. So, part B. If discriminant is greater than zero, then two real roots. Okay, we were told k is a real constant. Okay, so for all, and we need to prove that f of x has two distinct real roots for all non-zero values of k. So, if we have any value of k, we can say that 16k squared plus 4, let's say k is equal to, um, well, we can see that it's going to be positive all the way through. So k squared is greater than or equal to 0, which is greater than 0. So k squared, 16k squared plus 2 is also greater than or equal to 0. So it does have two real roots. And finally, for part C of this question, Okay, explain why f of x cannot have two distinct rules when k equals 0. So, if k equals 0, then 16 times 0 squared plus 4 is equal to 4. means it's greater than zero. We can also put k into the f of x
which equals 4kx squared plus 4k plus 2x plus 1. And if k is equal to 0, then 0 plus 2x plus 1. This is a linear equation. Thus, only one root. Last two, question 13. Using AdBrush in each stage you work in, find all the solutions to 2x plus the square root of x minus 6 equals 0. So the first thing I'm going to write is I'm going to write 2x to the power of a half squared, because that would be 2x. Okay, square root of a half times the square root of a half. Uh, sorry, the square root of x times the square root of x would give me x. Okay, plus x to the power of a half minus 6 equals 0. We are then going to say that x to the power of a half is equal to a different letter just so it stops getting confusing. And we will go with y. So I now have 2y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. And we now need to solve that. And we can solve that using uh, calculators. And we end up with y is equal to 1, sorry, y is equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 3 over 2. Not quite finished yet, because we're not solving for y, we're solving for x. And we know that x to the power of a half is equal to y, which is equal to 2, and we know that x to the power of a half is equal to minus 3 over 2. So. To get rid of the power of half, we need to square. So x is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. And x is equal to minus 3 over 2 squared, which is going to be 9 over 4, positive, which is 2 and a quarter. OK. The second part to question 13, then is to find a solution for x to the power 8 minus 17 x to the power 4 plus 16 equals 0. In exactly the same way we are going to say that's like saying x to the power 4 squared minus 17 times x to the power 4. Is that 4? x to the power 2 squared plus 16 equals 0. We're not liking that because we don't have, so I need to put the 4 and the 2 other way around on that one. So it should be x squared to the power of 4. No, I was correct first time. Let's start that again. Take all of that out. And we will say that x to the power 4 squared minus 17x to the 4 plus 16 is equal to 0. We will again say that x to the power 4 
is equal to z this time. So z squared minus 17, z plus 16 is equal to 0. Solving that one, factorizing it first, we can have z, z equals 0, and 16 and 1, both of them being minuses, giving us z equals 1 and z equals 16. Remembering that z is x to the power 4 and x to the power 4 equals 16. So x is equal to 1. And what to the power 4? 2 times 2 is 4. It's 2's. x to the is equal to 2.